sometimes it takes a tragic accident for us to really realize the priorities that we need to have on our boat. So we went upon ourselves to reach out to ACR Electronics. They do EPIRBs, personal locator beacons, and much more in here. So we're gonna take a quick tour with Mikkel and show you what they have inside. So we made our way inside, we met with Michael, and uh, he kind of gave us a rundown of what they do and how they work. So we're actually walking into their facility now, and I'm gonna show you just brief highlights. There's a lot of the materials in here that we cannot show you, but you'll get an idea of how this place functions. We're here with Mikkel, we have Brian with us as well. He's giving us a tour of the ACR factory, so I'm gonna let him kind of take control of this and show you what these things do. It's pretty impressive. We manufacture all of our beacons here in Fort Lauderdale, so really where it starts is at the SMT level. Um, you know, we don't outsource our, our circuit boards, we populate them, that way we've got full process control of, of the bolt from the board to the final assembly of the beacons right here. and. and that's how that's how we know we're building a quality product of course you know they're used to save lives so there can't be you know any defect ratio is, is unacceptable so you know here we are building this for the first circuit board they start with the laser etching on the board of the born on date and then they'll come and get the solder paste added on um, that way we can then populate those boards with each of the, the critical components which are you know, specified by engineer and it has to be that exact component to make sure that you know, they stay in frequency and also meet the certifications that are required. The boards essentially, we have four of these feeders with all the reels of all the different components depending on which beacon you're making. Um, but I believe we can populate close to 80,000 components an hour. Some of the stuff we do do hand soldering on. So some of the old probe lights from the military, um, the components are now too big for our SMT line because they're, you know, we made them like the 20 years ago, yeah. and so we do have to do some hand soldering on some of these boards. Before the board actually gets to, you know, it's the, you know the case that it, that it's going to live in with the battery. Um, it's essentially gone through a 45 satellite burst, um, and so we can literally get a test report of exactly how well it performed, uh, how well it's, it's in frequency. You know, we're talking about you know, EPIRBs are essentially kind of like a radio. So sometimes that you know they might need to be tuned up or down slightly, and so. If that's the case, we'll take them out of the board, we'll retune them, get them to that perfect 406 spectrum, and retest them again until they are 100%. And only then can they go into the cell to be uh, put in, into the case again.
what you actually just saw there was them sealing their components. It's a step not many of these companies take. So if the casing surrounding the e was to break, the components inside, which is actually the important part, is still protected from the water. So with the, with the category one bracket, you have this big ejector spring. Mm -hmm. It's held in here by this hydrostatic release. And the e then just sits right, right in this location. So when your boat sinks, or, or this bracket essentially gets submerged in roughly between six and 12 feet of water, then the hydro actually gets disconnected and stays in the front. And this ejector spring will shoot the beacon out about five, six feet, and the beacon will then float to the surface. Um, all e brackets have a magnet inside of them, and that deactivates the water sensor. So if you're just spraying down the boat, you know, and you get your e wet, you know, that's what prevents it from falsely activating. Um, but whenever a beacon is out of the bracket and gets wet, it will automatically turn on. Right. So that's why with the, with the auto deploy bracket, it'll deploy the beacon out into the water, it'll float to the surface, and now that it's just floating in the water without a bracket, it'll automatically activate. And so, so that's really the beauty behind the category one bracket. That, and it does completely encapsulate the beacon, so it protects it from all the UV and mother nature and, and whatnot. For center console boat though, you're gonna wanna keep this thing I would say at least, if you can get it up 10 feet, that would be ideal because if you're more likely to capsize instead of sink, yeah. you'd want it to still eject out. Um, so mount it high. We wanted to have Mikkel answer the question we know you guys are gonna have. What is the main difference between a PLV and the e options they have here at uh, ACR? Yeah, so the, the main differences here are the technology inside of this is essentially the same. It's a 406 megahertz signal with a 121.5 homing frequency. They both have GPS. Um, you know, obviously the size is a big difference here. So an e will work for a minimum of 48 hours at minus four degrees Fahrenheit. A PLV will work for a minimum of 24 hours at minus four degrees Fahrenheit. But the real factor becomes e are can be water activated um, PLVs must be manually activated. Oh, okay. um, so if you have a category one bracket on an e it can literally do everything you need it to do um, and automatically activate, whereas you have to you know, deploy the antenna and press the on button. The other thing with e is they're, they're designed for, for the marine environment, right? So they're a little more rugged um, and a little, a little more care is put into the buoyancy piece of this. So you've got the lanyard, you know, you can keep it attached to you, but e really are designed to work floating in the water. And so that way you can, you know, if you're separated from your boat, you let the e float next to you, it does its thing, you don't have to worry about it. You know, once it's activated, you never turn it off and you do its thing. With a PLB, uh, for the boating community, you know, like I said, you have to deploy the antenna, press the on button. Well, our PLBs that we make at ACR, they're buoyant. But they're buoyant so that way if you drop them in the water, you can retrieve them. And your hopes and dreams aren't sinking to the bottom <laughs> of the ocean, right? But they'll float upside down like this. Um, so with the PLB in the water for, for the center console guys, you want to make sure that they're mounted on your life jacket. You know, once you activate it, you know, we've got belt clips that come with them. We have oral inflation clips that come with them. You got to keep it mounted on your life jacket. If you're not wearing a life jacket, then you're, you gotta keep it out of the water and in your hands, you know. Out, so, while the beacon is completely waterproof and, and floats, you know, it takes a little bit more water manual. doesn't Water doesn't necessarily love signals and antennas, so you gotta keep it out of the water. So you're gonna be treading water with one hand, you know, hopefully everyone's wearing life jackets. PLBs are great, a great addition to that. So, those are really the main differences. The wearability, the functionality, you know, an e makes life a whole lot easier on the water because you can just, literally throw it in the water, have it turn on, forget it, and just worry about getting everyone off the boat, keeping everyone calm, keeping everyone safe.
you enjoyed that tour of uh, the ACR electronics facility. Uh, we actually walked out with a new few goodies ourselves, so a rescue link PLV, which is portable. You can take it with you anywhere in the world if you like, as long as it's registered here. And we have an Olus tag, which is made for children, kind of a man overboard, um, pets as well. Uh, they let you know, God forbid someone was to fall off the boat, where they're at, and you can quickly come back and find them. So a couple of excellent products that are must have from this company. The e is the next step we're looking to get for our boat, but we're gonna show you how these things work in the near future. guys for watching our informational series. If you'd like to check out our last video, click right up here. And if you like what you see and you want to see more at Center Consoles Only, please subscribe right here. Thanks guys.